Guys, uh, Mike here at Trader True Trading Group, and April 29th, a small green day for me, just folk, just just hitting singles. Um, was a slower day today. We actually did put in new all-time highs on the Nasdaq and on the S&P, um, but very inactive day. It was today was kind of all about mid caps. No surprise, um, you know, with earnings really getting underway. Today's a big week for earnings. Um, and we had some small caps make, I mean, mid caps make some really good moves. Small caps were pretty much dead today. Um, and I guess what I'm going to talk to you about in this video is, is one of my biggest weaknesses. Um, and that is getting involved in a trend that is already established. Like, <clears throat> meaning I missed my, I missed my setup opportunity. Um, and the stock ended up breaking out and then it just starts to churn higher in within its trend or churn lower in its trend, whether I'm trying to get short or get long, whatever, regardless, doesn't matter. But one of my biggest weaknesses as a trader is getting involved in an already established trend. Uh, and I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about that because it's something that I personally struggle with. Um, and if, if someone asked me, Mike, you know, what, what do you think your biggest weakness is as a trader? I think this is probably it. Um, but it is a, it's, it's a direct result of my, of me being a conservative trader. Um, I'm not an aggressive trader. What I'm, what I mean by that, it's completely irrelevant in terms of position size. I trade with large size, but, um, just because you trade with large size does not mean you're an aggressive trader. Aggressive traders buy stocks through resistance levels. And they buy breakouts. Conservative traders buy pullbacks into support levels. That's the main difference um, that <clears throat> separates a conservative trader from a an aggressive trader. I'm going I'm to talk to you guys a little bit about that because JMIA, JMIA Pinterest, PINS, and Lyft, all three of those names were on my watch list this morning for potential moves higher. All three of them made moves higher. And I did not pull the trigger on either one. I'm, you know, I was, I'm angry with myself for not pulling the trigger on either one. You know, I, I mean, I still am green on the day um, because of another mid cap name today. Definitely was all about the mid caps, but I, I could have had a really nice day if I pulled the trigger on even just one of Pinterest, Lyft, or JMIA. Even if just one of them, I could have had a really nice day. Uh, I'm gonna. We're gonna get into that. Before I do, tomorrow's TGD Tuesday, guys. Reminder: the chat room is open and free for everybody tomorrow. Um, all you have to do is go to TrueTradingGroup.com. Um, you'll click on the upper right-hand corner. You'll see a tab. It says TGD Tuesday. Click on that. Register. You'll get a link. It'll give you access into the chat room. It's completely free, guys. I open the chat room up free for everybody on Tuesday. Come in, say what's up. You'll see my screen. You'll hear me on the mic. You'll see my trades. You'll see everything that I'm doing. We go through um, the day. And also, you'll be in there with a bunch of the other TGD moderators and also members as well. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. So if you haven't checked this out yet, come in, say what's up, shoot me a message, say hi. Let me know you're from the YouTube community. I always love to hear from you guys. All right. So Let's get to Lyft. We're going to start with Lyft because Lyft was on my watch list for a potential swing trade today. Um, and what I want to talk to you guys about is identifying a bottom um, because I thought on Friday that Lyft put in a potential bottom, a potential near time low, near term low on Lyft. And the reason for that is to go out to a 15 minute chart so you can see this a lot more clearly. OK, here we are in a 15 minute chart and you guys can see this previous support area. Okay, that was holding here on lift. Okay, you can see this was a previous area of support. These are the this is the all time low. I mean, all time. I mean, only been trading, you know, a few weeks or so. But you know, you can see that since the disastrous IPO, it finally started to put in the bottom down there around 5580. There's that support level, and then you can see on Friday we violated that support level. We broke down below that support level and immediately took it back. Okay. That was a potential reversal pattern when we broke through that all-time low and ripped it right through new high of the day and we regained regained that area. So that price action put Lyft on my watch list this morning, okay? And it was actually on my swing trade for it was it was on my watches for a potential swing trade as I thought we were gonna we have a chance to get back up to at least test 62. 62 is a clear area of resistance as I pan this out. You guys will see here is your 62 
dollar area and it's pretty clear guys there's your resistance there here is your resistance and here is your prior support okay so there's that $62 level that's why I thought $62 was a beautiful target for a potential swing trade on lift and then let me go back and delete <clears throat> delete this stuff and we'll get to the intraday the intraday chart so what I want to point out to you guys is well here was that level again okay here was that level that I drew oh. Okay, so here's that line. There's the 15, 15 minutes. So there's that line. Now let's go to a three-minute chart. And you can see this morning, we, we got this morning, we immediately sold it off, and look where we found support. Right at that same line. Go back to a 15-minute chart. Here's that same line. Look where we found support. Look where we just put that tail in and then reversed it, put it in a nice V bottom. And right there, guys, is where I should I should have pulled the trigger somewhere in here for a potential swing trade and with my stop loss below that low of the day that's when I should have pulled the trigger and I missed it okay I missed my entry there on lift I was trading GDI um, in the morning and I figured when lift started to sell off like that in the morning I started to turn my attention away from it because I thought I had a lot more time to maybe to potentially enter this trade um, and I just missed it I just uh, you know uh, I missed it and this was a beautiful beautiful you know trade idea and, and trade concept and as I zoom this in you guys can see once we cross up and over VWAP we got a trade line VWAP crossover the trade line is this yellow line you see on my screen VWAP is the orange line you can see once we got the crossover pattern it just it held support let me zoom this in so you guys can see it more clearly this will be a lot easier there's the trade line VWAP crossover and then once we got it you can see the trade line just starts to hold support and pushes this okay all the way up to 50 59 50 real nice surge and I missed my opportunity there and, and really what you know when I really started to focus and I started to notice lift it was really in here when well I mean I, I, I saw I saw this obviously you know back in here but I missed that entry and then after we broke through the high of the day I started saying to myself here's my buying zone Okay, right in here was going to be my buying zone. I was going to look for a pullback. We just broke through the initial uh, morning high. So here you guys can see we had these initial highs right here. Okay, we broke through it. When we broke through that high, we had the heaviest volume the stock traded at any point during the day. So I was looking for a pullback into this area, and that would have been my next buying zone, and I just never got it. And, and this is where being a conservative trader – this is one of the one of the cons of being a conservative trader is that instead of me buying, okay, as buying as we're surging higher, I'm looking to buy pullbacks, and this is going to cause me to miss moves. Okay, it's one of the things that you sacrifice when you're going to be a conservative trader, and and I struggle with at finding any point during any of this that I'm comfortable entering lift up at this level because I'm not getting a pullback into a setup that I like. I'm not. The, the, the biggest thing that I struggle with when a stock is is well into its trend, its established trend, and I miss my initial entry point, is clearly identifying my stop loss. And that's why I could not bring myself to pull the trigger at any point during this action because I just clear I, I could not clearly say to myself, okay, where is my stop loss if I'm entering? And look, I mean, we just churned, 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 churned higher without ever really giving me a real a real nice deeper pullback that I could have gotten long. I was really hoping for a pullback into here to get long, but I never got it. And like I said, because I'm a conservative trader, I'm focused more on how much money I'm going to lose if I'm wrong than I am focused on how much I'm going to make when I'm right. Okay. Aggressive traders will miss a lot fewer trades than a conservative trader. A conservative trader will miss moves more than an aggressive trader, but I an aggressive trader is going to have larger losses because an aggressive trader is buying um, further away from the intended stop loss. So let's just use this lift as an example, okay, and say we broke through the high of the day. An aggressive trader would buy this here, okay, or an aggressive trader would buy this at, any, at some point during this push, while a conservative trader is going to wait, okay, a conservative trader will wait to see if you get a pullback, Okay, a conservative trader is going to say, okay, well, there's my support level. I'm going to wait to see if I get this little pullback. And then a conservative trader enters this position here using this previous high as their stop loss. And then you look to see, do you get, okay, do you get the continuation? Oh. Trying to draw out this. Uh... 
Okay, do you get this, you know, the discontinuation move? That's what I would be, what I'm looking for as a conservative trader. Okay, so as a conservative trader, I'm going to have much fewer um, or smaller losses. Okay, an aggressive trader will have larger losses, but an aggressive trader will also catch this move. A conservative trader won't, and that's why I missed this lift. And and this is why it's it's one of the harder things that I struggle with, and it's not... It's not even necessarily, guys, something that I, 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 I'm trying to fix in my trading. It's really just something that I've noticed that I've just developed and I've just dealt with for 14 years that I've been a trader. I've never, early in my trading career, I never had a hard time um, locking in big winners. Okay, my winners were always big, but I also had really big losers. Okay, I was, I was very arrogant when I was a young trader. I was very... Um, I lacked discipline. I was a mental nutcase. My emotions got the best of me many times and my losses were large. Okay. And then it wasn't until I started to really get my losses under control and really manage that downside that my P&L started to skyrocket, even though my winners weren't getting bigger, my losses were just getting smaller. Um, and this has just become, um, you know, this conservative mindset and really being conscious of my downside risk more so than I am conscious of my upside potential. Um, and that doesn't mean you just buy a stock just because you have low risk on it. You got to make sure the risk reward is there on the trade. Preferably, you look for a two to one risk reward ratio. If you're risking 5% to the downside, you know, you got to make at least, you know, try to make at least 10% to the upside. So you got to make sure the risk reward is there for the trade. But um, I'm always more concerned about my downside than I am. I'd rather miss a trade. OK, and not make money, then chase a stock by the top. And then I get stopped out with a much larger stop, loss, a much larger risk than I initially intended. And I lose a lot more money than I initially thought. Um, so I'd rather not make money than lose money any day. OK, um, and I, it, you know, I miss JMIA. I miss, you know, Pinterest was another one. OK, this, you know, this Pinterest was just a, a beast today. Just continue to push and surge, and I just I didn't pull the trigger on either one of these mid caps. Um, it just pushed all during lunchtime. Just kept pushing new high at one o'clock. I mean, and then new high late in late in the afternoon. I just wasn't, um, you know, I just never pulled the trigger on on either one of these these mid caps. I could have. There were opportunities for me to like, especially in Pinterest. Okay, if I as I pan this in, especially in Pinterest, when we bounced off a of VWAP here going into the afternoon, I probably could have got long in there. Um, so there, there, there was opportunity, but a little upset with myself today, guys, um, for missing all these moves because all three of them were on my watch list in the morning. So I'll find peace in knowing that the analysis, I was right, but still sucks to, to, to be right and then, and then not pull the trigger on either one of them. But again, can't be too upset because I still did make money today, and that was because of GDI. Now let's get to that. I'm doing this in. GDI gapped up, big, strong opening bell push. Okay, nice, nice volume. I mean, look at the volume on that push right off the bell. That really got my attention on that surge off the bell. And then we pulled in and I start to notice that we are holding support at the 23.6 Fibonacci level. Then I start to notice the trade line is starting to work its way up here. And we're holding, 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 holding. As soon as we got this little bit of a perk right here, I got long right there at 32.23. It took you guys to my trade announcements. I did not save it. Oh. Guys, I'm sorry. I did not say I did not take the screenshot before I closed down the chat. I always screenshot my trade announcements from chat um, so I can show you guys. But I forgot to screenshot it before um, I closed down the chat room to make this video. So I do apologize. But nonetheless, guys, I'm long here at 32.23. We pushed up here. My first take profit was in front of the high of the day. I sold 25% of the position right here at 32.93. Uh, and then once we pulled it back in, okay, I bailed on, on this position once we broke down, uh, once we broke down below VWAP. Okay, so once VWAP was violated, I broke, we broke down below VWAP, I exited the rest of that position at 32.35. So still profitable on the entire position, but nothing to write home about, guys, not a home run trade by any means. I 70 cents per share gain on 25% of my position, and then I made like 12 cents a share on 75% of the position. So it was, a, it was a small trade, but still green on the day. Um, tomorrow is FOMC meeting. So I do expect another slower type of day tomorrow. Google missed, missed earnings. 
um, after the bell today. So that's starting to pull down tech a little bit. So it'll be interesting to see if some of that weakness tomorrow morning gets bought back up. Um, or if maybe we see a little bit of a deeper pull in after establishing new all time highs today, um, some profit taking may kick in. Maybe we get a little bit of a deeper pullback, but either way, we'll be ready for it. Come and chat tomorrow, guys. Like I said, it's TG Tuesday. It's free all day. We open it up around 7.30 a.m. Eastern. We're there until about 5 p.m. I trade the whole day. I'm not done at, you know, 11 o'clock or so. I'm there the whole day navigating the markets because opportunity is there all day long. You just got to find it. Okay. So hope to see many of you in chat with us tomorrow. Take care.